Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth with Drew Galloway, and we bring back the golden rule, which is if we're here talking to you, it's either good news that K-State has gotten a commitment or somebody has died. Nobody has died because K-State trying to bring an NCAA tournament bid back to life. They will continue this with the commitment of Brendan Housen from Villanova, which serves a really significant need on K-State's roster. My my gripe for as long as time has gone on uh, going through Bruce Weber's teams and then this past season with Jerome Tang's squad is where are the shooters? You got to have shooters. You got to put the ball in the hole to win the game. K-State has gotten themselves a shooter. Brendan Housen, a career almost 40% shooter at Villanova. He was 38% this past season. Um, that was with almost five attempts per game, averaged over six points a game for the Wildcats. And he was a four-star uh, rated player in the transfer portal. So he comes to K-State. This is a good get for them because we've talked about many times the fit that these guys have and what K-State is trying to do. And Brendan Housen in last year's K-State offense would have gotten some good looks from three because some guys did for K-State. They just didn't have the talent to knock them down when they were there. Brendan Housen has that talent. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm really excited about Brendan Housen. He's he's a guy that both of us really like because he shoots a lot of threes and doesn't shoot a lot of twos. But I will bring a, a fun fact that I learned about Brendan Housen. 100% at the rim over our last season. Good uh, to know. Three for three still counts. That's still 100%. <laughs> it does still count. <laughs> It's a yeah, it's it's a good news there uh, on on Brendan Housen, and this is also significant now because just a couple days prior to Brendan Housen committing to K State, R.J. Jones entered the transfer portal, and R.J. Jones, I I would throw this out there. People are going to say, oh, he was a shooter, like it kept it rang true throughout the season. Everybody would say that he hit that one three against Baylor, and he certainly took a lot of threes, but. R.J. Jones shot under 30% from three last season. He was a shooter. He wasn't a maker at this point in time. K-State needs makers, and right now you're bringing in a guy like Brendan Housen, who is a maker and fits really well with what K-State wants because this is a true like spot-up guy and be there. Because I think some people get PTSD with the Tyler Perry situation. Brendan Housen is not going to have to really handle the ball for K-State. This is going to be... Go find your spot and hope that whoever has the ball down low can kick it out or we'll swing it around quick enough and hit you. This is why this is a really good fit for K-State, and I know the R.J. Jones loss is going to sting for some people, but there really wasn't going to be an avenue if things like they are tracking right now. wasn't going to be an avenue for R.J. Jones to be on the floor a ton this coming season, and now you bring in a guy that the best asset that R.J. Jones has, Brendan Housen does it to the tune of 10 percentage points better. Yeah, I mean, I said it when Brendan Housen took a visit to K-State. I didn't say it publicly, of course, because he didn't want it to leak that much. But, like, it was, it felt like the writing was kind of on the wall then for R.J. Jones to potentially transfer because, like you said, I, I just think that Housen is a better shooter than R.J. Jones at this point. Not that R.J. Jones can't improve, but Housen is a more proven shooter right now. And to your point, like, they're – there isn't a lot of avenue for minutes for both guys. So it was probably one or the other. And it, it seems like Casey really wanted Brendan Housen. And I mean, he is an elite shooter. He had, I believe it was four or five games this, this past season where he made five threes or more. Uh, he, he made five threes or more in two conference games. So I mean, he, he can really fill it up from three. And he's not afraid to shoot a lot of threes in a short period of time. I mean, that's five field goals or five three-point field goals a game in 17 minutes. So I think that he really fits with what K-State wants to do uh, from a roster building and kind of just a lineup standpoint. So I'm excited about uh, having a really elite shot now or shot maker because, I mean, like you said, we had, there was a lot of shot takers, but now it's it's shot makers. Yeah, and this is this is just a really good get for K State, and uh, another one that rounds out the roster. Like this is if you're talking classes of transfers, this is not a class A guy like Doug McDaniel or like some of the other targets K State's after Khalif Battle, Clifford Amori, 
Um, Baba Miller, I would even throw into that category just for how bad K State wants him and where the projection is. I mean, I even saw uh, going back a couple months, like that Baba Miller was in mock drafts to go in the second yes. round of the draft this coming season. But Brendan Housen is this perfect class B player like CJ Jones, where they have the right role. Like they're they're going to be on a team where they can do their thing and it's going to be helpful. And K State is adding the the higher end players to make them be really successful. So this is really good news for K State, I think, to get a guy like Brendan Housen. It's it's just what the doctor ordered. The underrated portion of what Brendan Housen will bring to the table is something that we kind of talked about on Friday. But when he's on the floor, every team is going to know the scout on Brendan Housen that he's a really good shooter. So that means that teams will probably not help off of him as much because if they do, it means that a three is probably going in the air on a drive. And because of that, that opens up driving avenues for the rest of K-State's roster and even brings a dimension of where because they're probably not going to help off of him, that if a K-State guard would drive in or somebody like Baba Miller, if K-State was telling him, would drive in, that there's a potential for a driving kick to a different shooter because a different shooter could be wide open too. And K-State just has more guys now yeah. that can knock down the three than they had last year. Or I'd even add uh, the Jerome Tank's first season when they went to the Elite Eight. I think that they have probably more guys that yeah. can knock down a three now. Yeah, I mean, you essentially had just three guys that season, Noel, Johnson, and Masood. And now you look at where things stand. K-State, the th I'll throw them up. The three portal commits that they have now, Doug McDaniel, C.J. Jones, Brennan Housen, all shot at least 37% from three last season. Doug McDaniel was the, the lowest. I, I rounded up. He was 36.8. C.J. Jones was just a tick shy of 38%. Housen was over 38%. The guys that they lost did not shoot like that. Cam Carter was under 30. It may have even gotten down to like the 32, 31 range. RJ Jones was under 30. We know Finister and Colbert weren't shooters. The best shooters on K-State's team last year, Arthur Kaluma from three, 34.5%. Tyler Perry, 33.5%. Day-Day Ames at 33. And then it drops off to Cam Carter was under 31 and everybody else was there. This team has added shooting that is worlds better than what they got last season. And like you're saying, even to the extent of some situations, the the year prior in the elite eight team, this was, this is a big time get for K state. And the more I talk about it, the more excited I get, because again, I like to put the ball in the hole. You, you don't win a basketball game at the final score is zero, zero. You do win a basketball game at the final score is 101 to 100. You just got to score more points than the other team. So this is a, a good ad from that standpoint. Yeah, and I'll I'll add that like I I worry a little bit about Brennan Housen on the defensive standpoint, but I think that like you said, defense kind of overrated. Not not like to like that extreme, but he's a good <laughs> enough defender that I don't think that it will matter a ton. Because I think that he just brings so much versatility to the lineup. And and I talked about this even before Housen was committed that you could see that the roster is going to have so much more of a, a fit this yeah. year. And they have so many complementary pieces that work off of each other this year that I, I think that was really missing on this last team, because I think that now they have more ball handlers, they have more scorers, they have more shooters that they're going to be a very versatile team. And I think that fit right now and how you want to play is just as important as the talent. I mean, nobody was like, going nuts about Iowa State's portal class last spring. And look at what Iowa State did this year. Like it, it, that just proves to me, I think that having fit is just as important. Yeah. We talked about this a lot last year where it's about basically putting a puzzle together. And if you don't get the right pieces, it's just not going to, it's not going to work out the way you want it to. In K-State, it felt like, Last season, they were always missing a piece to that puzzle. Now, people would say, hey, Naquan Tomlin. I think Naquan Tomlin would have helped them last year, but based on what we know K-State needed, you would have you still needed a shooter on last year's team. And maybe if you have Naquan, maybe the, the burden is lesser on Tyler Perry, so maybe his shooting goes up a little. But 
he was still going to have to handle the ball, you know? So that's where the things are starting to line up a lot better for K-State now. You feel like you have two really good lead guards going into next year, obviously with Doug McDaniel and Day-Day Ames with hoping that he just continues to build off of what was a strong finish to this past season. And now you keep adding the dudes around them, like C.J. Jones that has the link, some good things there, knocks down shots. Brendan Housen is here. He's a hired gun. There's a lot to like about what K-State's doing, and they're not done yet in the portal, one would think. You see down at the bottom the the targets that are still left. Clifford Amore is going to be in town. Actually, he's already been in town. Baba Miller already visited. Khalif Battle going to visit as well. Those are big-time guys, and if you land – two of those three, you feel really good about where you're going. And K-State has really good backup options to those guys in line right now that we're not talking about at this point because there's no need to yet. But if it gets there, I think this team, Jerome Tang keeps saying he wants to have the roster done in the next two to seven days. I think it's a possibility, and this team could be really good when this roster is done. Wow. <clears throat> Sometimes I, I think that you can like genuinely read my mind because of how long that we've been doing this and how often we've been doing this. Because I was literally about to say, like that peek behind the curtain, like we're recording this in advance. Like we don't know if K-State will land other guys in this in between time. But it seems like that the depth on this K-State team, I mean, I said this to some of my friends yesterday, that the depth on this team, if they get all of their main targets, is probably better than any K-State team that has came in the last 10, 15 years because they have so many guys that I'm like, okay, well, I want this player to get minutes, but like, I, I don't know how it'll, all, how it'll all play out. So the depth on this next team, I think will be very, very good to the point where I think K-State might be one of the deepest teams in the big 12 even. Yep. Nope. I agree. Well, if you want more on the K-State recruiting situation, head over to kstateonline.com. Stay in the know there how visits went, who's up next, maybe coming to town, or what K-State is going to have to shift to with the plans. But Brendan Housen on board. The Wildcats get another shooter, and things starting to take shape for Jerome Tang's upcoming season at K-State. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching K-State Online. We'll be back again tomorrow with uh, more news and notes on the Cats.